I did a lot of good karma. And after that, when I returned, then I started meeting very, it's like attracting a lot of, you know, positive people. Some of them are extremely rich. And I'm talking European rich. And uh, they really helped me with a lot of money. They borrowed me a lot of money. They taught me how to invest in stock, which I did. They helped me invest on on them, on my behalf. And the money grew, obviously. Then uh, I became very rich very fast. And again, I fell into another trap for a few good years. <laughs> Five, six years, I think. <laughs> you enjoyed material well. Yeah, I mean, to the extreme. You know, I remember two big diamond studs. <laughs> I remember a mohawk. I'll try to share some photos with you. Wow. So, <laughs> I think maybe now is a good time to, you know, bring them out of the hard drive and share it to the world. I think, yeah, <laughs> I trust you with that. Um, I've always kept it secret. Uh, not like I'm ashamed or anything, but just still, it was a silly phase in my life. So Gucci Armani from top to bottom. <laughs> I look like, uh, you know, this showroom threw up on me. I had a Maserati. I had a Mini Cooper, John John Cooper Works, GCW, Cabrio, 211 horsepower, red. <laughs> Beautiful, my favorite actually. You monk who bought a Ferrari. I am a monk who sold his Maserati. <laughs> <laughs> That's what some people call me actually. Uh, so yeah, a few good things. Yeah. Why did you leave it then? Because, um, I don't know Ranveer, I mean like as, when I was okay, when I was poor, obviously you suffer. You know, you hardly can put bread on the table and, and um, you know, a morsel into your mouth. And you hardly have a roof over your head. Like I spent a few, you know, a few days, maybe a week on the sidewalk in England when I was very poor. I had depression and you know, I got kicked out of my job and so many like stories. Um, so like being too poor was an extreme. Being too rich was another extreme. Then I started to attract like uh, people that I could not really relate to. People who are always too materialistic. Though I don't judge people who have money. Obviously, it's their own good karma. But then I think when you grow too fast, you know, uh, grow rich too fast, you don't know how to handle your wealth. Then I think you kind of get lost and you become too materialistic and you lose your good friends. And like we said in the beginning, life is more about love and relationships and God. So I think I started losing those good things. So I was starting to feel empty. Every day, just wake up, go to the gym, in my Maserati, you know, and just work out and talk to the, some of the, I think, footballers like Ricardo Quaresma. He used to come to my gym. Okay. I love him. Yeah. He's, he's Trivela is something else. So, this was in Portugal? Yeah, yeah. He was in my gym for one month. I think he was going through some rehab. That yeah. time, I think he was playing in Porto. If he, he was supposed to be better than Ronaldo yeah. when he was young. Yes. And uh, the narrative in football is that he slipped off a little bit, but, you know, who's to judge what kind of mental health issues you're going through? I think circumstances are big. But I'll tell you his vibe from his heart. It's, it was very pure. He was yeah. a genuinely good guy. They used to call him Sigano in Portuguese. Sigano, I think, is a very endearing term for calling the gypsy, you know, because he came from the gypsy background. So, with a very endearing way, Portuguese used to call him Sigano. Like, that gypsy, you know, he's ours. And <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, uh, so it was becoming very, like, repetitive. The same cycle, five-star hotels, you know, Michelin food and Barcelona 2012. I remember Rids. Uh, I was staying in a suite. I spent 15 lakhs on two nights, which was, I think, <laughs> too much. <laughs> Some of my friends got food poisoning. Seriously, I think I still may have the receipt. You're born in poverty and then you go to spending 15 lakhs yeah. in two nights. It was crazy. I used to have, like, few ATM machines. So, when I used to go to the, you know, in Europe, they have, like, these um, uh, ATM centers and you have, like, three or four ATMs. So, just, just show off to my friends. I used to put one card in each and quickly type before the time runs out and take money out and <laughs> give it to the friends and again take uh -huh. the next amount, you know, three four cards, put the pins. Just crazy. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've spoken to someone on this show who's seen this amount of life. Including your previous life. <laughs> yeah. Like you've seen the most amount of life. But then you return to like spiritual living and love. It says a lot. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm fortunate that I saw everything quite soon. And uh, I managed to get, get back on track. And right now, I'm happy with whatever little I have. Sometimes I have little, sometimes I have little more, more than little. Right now, I live on donations. I teach. And whatever people give me, one rupee, ten rupee, one thousand, ten thousand, it's up to them. I don't charge for anything. Nothing at all. So, yeah. It's, Is there a shortage of anything in your life? No, nothing at all. I think as long as I can pay for my air tickets to come to Bombay and see you, to eat vada pav. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, as long as I can, just, I love photography. Um, I have uh, one few decent cameras and good lenses. I love photography. So I, I like taking photos, traveling, seeing uh, different places. As long as I can do that, 